Greetings, everyone. Learning is a hobby here. Um, I want to go over uh, section 5.3 that my my summary for section 5.3 in Tao's uh, analysis one book. Uh, so we'll, that's what I'll do in this video. I apologize for the gap in between 5.2 and uh, 5.3. Uh, my wife and I went on a, a little vacation, so I, I didn't have time to um, you know, make the videos because we were enjoying ourselves. Uh, I actually, um, whoops, uh, I actually wrote up the notes for this and did the solutions to this section before we left for vacation. I just ran out of time to make to be able to make the videos before we left. So um, I just we'll, we'll continue with chapter five now, though, since we're back. So let me stop rambling and get to the the notes and everything. And we'll in the next video, we'll, we'll talk about the solution set. <clears throat> Uh, sorry, I mean the exercise set. All right, so here's my notes. And let's just move some things out of the way and we can go through them. So uh, we're going to start but finally by constructing the real numbers in section 5.3, which is going to take us a few sections to do. Um, in this section, we'll define what you know what a real number mean is going to mean for us um, by using Cauchy sequences, which we've defined in the previous section, and um, <clears throat> we'll use some of that machinery to uh, you know talk about the arithmetic operations, so addition, subtraction, multiplication, uh, division, etc. Uh, in this section, and then we have the order properties that we'll talk about in the next section, and some other things too. Um, so there's a few more sections that we have to go through after this one, but this is the beginning of the construction. So here we go. Definition 5.3.1. This is how we're going to define a real number in Tau's book anyway. Uh, a real number is defined to be an object of the form limit n goes to infinity of a n, where a n and going from one to infinity is a Cauchy sequence of rational numbers. Two real numbers, lim a n and lim b n, I'll Stop, I'll not uh, say the n go to infinity just for convenience of, you know, keeping the flow going. So lim a n and lim b n are said to be equal if and only if the Cauchy sequences a n and b n are equivalent Cauchy sequences. Uh, the set of all real numbers is denoted by r. <clears throat> and he gives an example. So here's an informal uh, example. a1, a2, a3, dot, 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 denote the sequence 1.4, 1.41, 1.414, et cetera, et cetera. And b1, b2, b3, dot, 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 denote the sequence 1 1.5, 1 1.42, 1 1.415, 1.4143, et cetera, et cetera. Then the limit of the ans is a real number, and it's the same real number actually as the limit bn, because an and bn are equivalent Cauchy sequences. In other words, the limit of an equals limit bn. <clears throat> Okay, uh, just a note, we will refer to limit an as the formal limit of uh, the sequence an. Later, we'll define the general no no uh, notion of limit um, that's actually in the next chapter and show that the formal limit of Cauchy, uh, Cauchy sequence is the same as the limit of that sequence. After that, we will discard the notion of formal limit just as we did with uh, double minus and double slash uh, when we constructed the, the, rational, the uh, integers and the rationals. Okay, <clears throat> so here's our first proposition. 5.3.3, formal limits are well-defined. Let X be the limit of AN and Y be limit BN and Z be limit CN be real numbers. Then with the above definition of equality for real numbers, we have X equals X. Also, if X equals Y, then Y equals X. Finally, if X equals Y and Y equals Z, then X equals Z. So in other words, you know, we wanna show that uh, equivalent, uh, the, our notion of equivalence of real numbers is an equivalence relation. Uh, but we'll ha we'll wait for the proof until the I get to the exercise set, which like I said, I've already done, but I'll, you know, I'll do that in the next video. So uh, f exercise 5.3.1 will prove that theorem, uh, that proposition there. So we'll skip that for now. <clears throat> All right, uh, another note. Now we know that our definition of equality um, well, after we see the proof, <laughs> we know that our, our definition of equality between two real numbers is legitimate. When we define other operations on the reals, however, like we've been doing, we still need to check the axiom of substitution holds. Uh, so here we'll define addition, and then we'll show that the axiom of substitution holds for addition. Okay, so definition 5.3.4, addition of real numbers, let x equal lim a n and uh, y equal lim b n, then b, uh, let those be real numbers, then we define the sum x plus y to be the limit 
as n goes to infinity of a n plus b n. Right, and then he just gives it a quick example here. So limit one plus one over n plus limit two plus three over n is equal to limit three plus four over n. This, I guess, should technically be in parentheses here. Okay, um, and then we get to our, our lemma here. We want to show that uh, sums of Cauchy sequences are Cauchy to start with. <clears throat> All right, so let uh, x be, this is the lemma here, let x be limit a n, y e be limit b n, be real numbers, that x plus y is also a real number. Uh, in other words, a n plus b n is a Cauchy sequence of rationals. All right, so let's do, let's prove that here. Since x and y are real numbers, those sequences are Cauchy sequences, which means a n and b n are both uh, event, by, by this notation here, I mean the sequence, right? So I didn't write it out, but because it's sometimes kind of annoying to write out the indices over and over again, but these are se the sequences here, uh, are both eventually epsilon over two steady for epsilon greater than zero. Therefore, there is m greater than or equal to zero and n greater than or equal to zero, such that for all nm greater than or equal to max nm, <clears throat> the distance between an and am is less than or equal to epsilon over two, and same thing for the distance between bn and bm, then um, if we look at the distance between an plus bn and uh, am minus, uh, sorry, there should be a plus here. <clears throat> um, where is it? Here, there should be a plus. Uh, and then uh, am plus bm. Uh, and then we could just rearrange some things. That's the same thing as an minus am plus bn minus bm. Uh, and then that's less than or equal to the distance between an minus am plus the distance between bn and my, uh, minus bm, sorry, the distance between bn and bm, that's by the triangle inequality, right? And that's less than or equal to epsilon over two plus epsilon over two, which is the same thing as epsilon for all nm greater than or equal to max nm. Therefore, the sum uh, of these two sequences is a Cauchy sequence. <clears throat> okay. Then we move on to the next lemma here, uh, where we show that sums of equivalent Cauchy sequences are equivalent. In other words, you know, they, the addition of real numbers satisfies uh, the axiom of substitution. So let x equal lim a n, y equal lim b n, and x prime equal lim a n prime be real numbers. And suppose that x equals x prime, then we have x plus y equals x prime plus y. So here's the proof. All right. So assume x equals x prime, then that by definition, that means that lim a n equals lim a n prime, <clears throat> which implies that a n minus a n prime and going from one to infinity is, the is uh, eventually epsilon close for every epsilon greater than zero. Then for uh, that implies that for every epsilon greater than zero, there is n in n uh, such that for any Sorry, just readjusting here for any uh, n greater than or equal to capital N, a n minus a n prime in absolute value less than equal epsilon implies a n minus a n prime in absolute value equals absolute value of a n plus b n minus a n prime plus b n less than or equal to epsilon plus zero, which is equal to epsilon, obviously. That follows from proposition 4.3.7, where we generalize the notion of epsilon close to include the case where epsilon equals zero. <clears throat> Right, and that implies a n plus b n and a n prime plus b n prime are eventually epsilon close for every epsilon greater than or equal to zero, which means they're equivalent Cauchy sequences, uh, which means that the limit of a n plus b n is equal to the limit of a n prime plus b n prime, which means that x plus y equals x prime plus y, and that's the, the proof of the theorem or the lemma. <clears throat> All right, just a remark here as well, uh, remark 5.3.8. The above lemma verifies the axiom of substitution for x in the sum x plus y. Uh, we can similarly prove the axiom of substitution for y by observing from the definition of x plus y that x plus y equals y plus x, since a n plus b n equals b n plus a n. So, you know, we just skip that part. All right, next we talk about multiplication. So here's how we're going to define multiplication of real numbers. So this is definition 5.3.9. Uh, let let uh, x equal the limit a n and y equal limit b n be real numbers. Then we define the product x y to be x y equals lim a n b n. 
right? And then we have to show that it satisfies the axiom of substitution. So we have proposition 5.3.10 uh, that states that multiplication is well defined. Let x be equal, be equal to limit a n, y equal limit b n, and x prime equal limit a n prime be real numbers. Then x y is also a real number. Furthermore, if x equals x prime, then x y equals x prime y, uh, and then. <clears throat> we will prove this, but we'll do it in the exercise sets. So this is ex the proof for this is exercise 5.3.2. So we'll do that in the next video. All right. Uh, just a note here, we can prove a similar substitution rule, just like we said for addition, uh, when y is replaced by a real number y prime for which y equals y prime. But we'll skip doing that because it's, you know, similar. So uh, we can also use uh, the fact that... Um, uh, multiplication of rationals is uh, commutative. So uh, then another note here, we embed the rationals back into the reals by equating every rational number Q with the real number limit Q. This embedding is consistent with our definition of addition and multiplication, since for any A, B, and Q, the limit of the constant uh, sequence A plus the limit of the constant sequence B uh, equals limit a plus b and same thing for the product limit a times limit b is limit a b uh, those are obviously these are constant sequences so they're cauchy right uh, this identification of rational numbers and real numbers is consistent with our definition of equality uh, and then he asks us to prove that in exercise 5.3.3 so but again we'll do that in the next video <clears throat> all right we can easily also define uh, negation, so you know the negative of x for real numbers x by defining it like this. Negative x will define to be negative one times x, since negative one is a, a rational number that implies that negative one is real. Note that this is consistent with our notion of negation of rational numbers, since if q is a rational number, then negative q is the same thing as negative one times q. Uh, also, um, negative limit a n is equal to the limit of negative a n. And then uh, Tao doesn't prove this in the book, but he asks us to do it. So here's my proof of that. Negative limit a n is the same thing as negative one times the limit a n by what we set up above. Uh, and that's the same thing as limit of negative one, because, you know, negative one is a rational number, right? So uh, it's equal to the con uh, the real number negative one is equal to the con uh, the limit of the constant sequence negative one, right? Uh, times limit a n. And by our definition of multiplication, that's the same thing as limit negative one times a n, which is the same thing as limit negative a n. And that, that proves that statement. All right, once we've uh, addition, sorry, once we have addition and negation, we can define subtraction. So, you know, we do this in the way you you would assume we would. So x minus y is defined to be x plus minus y. Uh, note that this implies limit a n minus limit b n is the same thing as limit a n minus b n. Okay, uh, then we have proposition 5.3.11. All the laws of algebra from proposition 4.1.6 hold not only for the integers, but for the reals as well. Uh, now, uh, here, because if you remember in, in proposition 4.1.6, there was a bunch of things to prove. Uh, they're done in similar a similar way to what we're going to do here. So uh, Tau only proves the distributive law, so I'll do that too. He doesn't ask us to prove the other ones, but they're proved in a similar way, so I'm not going to waste time on it. But you get the idea from this one example. So, uh, so here we prove the distributive law, x times y plus z equals xy uh, plus xz for all real numbers x, y, z. And he says the other properties are proved in a similar way. <clears throat> all right, so assume that uh, x is lim a n, y is limit b n, z is limit c n, then x times y plus c by uh, de definition is, well, we haven't used the definition yet, but is equal to limit a n times in parentheses limit b n plus limit c n. Uh, that's equal to limit a n times, so we do the, the addition first, limit of b n plus c n, and then by our definition, that's by the definition of addition, and then by the definition of multiplication, that's the same thing as limit a n times in parentheses b n plus c n, but there's a distributive law for rational numbers, so that's equal to limit n goes to infinity a n b n plus a n c n, which is equal to limit a n b n plus limit a n c n, by the way we defined addition uh, of real numbers, and then we can also break up the the terms into two factors by using the the, the um, definition of multiplication of real numbers that's equal to limit a n times limit b n plus limit a n times limit c n which is x y plus x c and that's the 
the proof of the distributive law. Like I said, the other ones are proven, you know, in a similar manner. So we'll skip just we'll just skip doing that because it's it's straightforward. <laughs> okay. Um there's a note here. The next basic arithmetic operation we need to define is reciprocation. Uh, we'll need that in order to define division. So X goes to X inverse. However, this is a bit more subtle. First, uh, so for our first guess for what we might choose the inverse to be would be the inverse of the real number limit a n. Maybe we should we would think it would be limit of a n inverse. Uh, however, there's some problems there, uh, and he gives an example to illustrate the type of uh, problematic situations that can arise um, from that definition. So for example, he gives the sequence a1, a2, a3, dot, 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 which is 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, et cetera, et cetera, and x equals limit a n. Then by the above definition, x inverse would, would be the limit of b n, where b1, b2, b3, et cetera, is 10, 100, 1000. This is using our definition, our you know first guess for the definition up above. Uh, so 10, 100, 1,000, then uh, 10,000, and so on and so on. Uh, notice that that sequence is not Cauchy. And remember, we need, uh, in order for the thing to be a, a real, the formal limit to be a real number, it has to be the limit of a Cauchy sequence. But this one is not a Cauchy sequence. And the problem is that um, the sequence of ANs is equivalent to the constant sequence of zeros. So in other words, it's the real number zero. Um, and then here, just the proving that statement here, which he doesn't, again, he doesn't do it in the book. He asks us to do it. So I proved it here. Let epsilon greater than zero, then for any n greater than or equal to n, where one over epsilon less than equal 10 to the capital N, the distance between a n and zero is equal to a n minus zero, which is the uh, absolute value of a n, which is equal to 10 to the negative n. By the way, we defined the, the sequence, uh, but that's less than or equal to 10 to the minus n, which, right, because n is um, greater than capital N, uh, which is less than or equal to epsilon, because we chose uh, capital N to be, you know, such that one over epsilon is less than or equal to 10 to the capital N. Therefore, for any epsilon greater than zero, a n and zero, the, the sequence of a n's and the sequence of zeros are eventually epsilon close. Therefore, the two sequences are equivalent Cauchy sequences. All right, so that's my proof. This suggests that we should only allow reciprocation for a real number x when x is non-zero. However, even in that case, there are some issues that, that arise. So he again, he gives another example. Um, there's a problem that can still show up. For example, if, if you look at the sequence a1, a2, a3, dot, 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 which we define to be 0, then 0 0.9, 0 0.0, uh, sorry, 0 0.99, then 0 0.999, et cetera, et cetera, then the limit of the ans is 1, but this suggests that uh, with our above de definition, that one does not have a, a reciprocal because a one is equal to zero. And <clears throat> remember, zero in the rationals has no reciprocal. But to address this, we need this definition. So uh, sequence, is, we, this is the definition of what it means for a sequence to be bounded away from zero. Uh, this is defi definition uh, 5.3.12. So a sequence a n of rational numbers is said to be bound, bounded away from zero if and only if there exists a rational number c greater than zero, such that the absolute value of a n is greater than or equal to zero for all n greater than or equal to one. And then he gives some examples here. Um, the first sequence in the example a, one minus one, one minus one dot 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 is bounded away from zero um, because it satisfies the definition. Uh, in part B, we have the sequence 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, etc. Notice this one is not bounded away from zero. Um, same thing for C, 0, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, etc. is not bounded away from uh, zero, again, because it doesn't satisfy the definition. Uh, and then part D is uh, the sequence part D is bounded away from zero, but is not bounded. That's the sequence 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So just some examples to, you know, wrap your head around what the, the, the definition is saying. All right, then we have Lemeth 5.3.14. Let X be a non-zero real number, then X equals limit a n for some Cauchy sequence a n, which is bounded away from zero. All right. And here's the proof. Um, let X be, you know, we need some the sequences to work with. So let X be limit a n, where X is not zero, which is not, you know, limit of zero as n goes to infinity. Then a n 
is a Cauchy sequence that is not eventually epsilon close to zero. For some epsilon greater than zero, fix this epsilon, then the distance between a n and zero is equal to a n, sorry, equal to the absolute value of a n, which is greater than or equal to epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n for some n capital N in N. Also, AJ minus AK in absolute value less than epsilon over two for all JK less than, uh, sorry, greater than or equal to N, um, N hat for some N hat in N. In particular, we can take AN zero such that the absolute value AN zero greater than or equal to epsilon for N zero greater than or equal to N. Uh, and then here I have a star uh, next to this next um, string of reasoning and that's because he doesn't show that in the proof he asks the reader to do it so tau asks the reader to show this result so um i wrote that out here uh the absolute value a n minus epsilon is less than or equal to absolute value a n minus a n zero less than or equal to epsilon over two then uh for n greater than or equal to max n n hat that implies that a n mi minus epsilon is between negative epsilon over two and epsilon over two which implies that zero is less than epsilon over two less than or equal to a n less than uh three epsilon over two um it should be less than or equal let me just fix this hang on it doesn't really make much of a difference but that should be less than or equal. Um, I got that just because I didn't write out the step. I got that by adding epsilon to all three sides, by the way. Uh, and that implies that the absolute value of a n is greater than or equal to epsilon over two uh, for all n greater than or equal to max n n hat, which I'll call n prime. All right. Then what we're going to do is we'll create a new sequence, b n, where b n is epsilon over two for all uh, n between 1 and n prime, and bn equals a n for all n greater than n prime, then the sequence a and the sequence b are eventually epsilon close for every epsilon greater than 0, uh, which implies that a n and b n are equivalent Cauchy sequences such that x is equal to limit a n, and that's also equal to limit b n. Furthermore, b n has the property that absolute value bn is greater than or equal to epsilon over two for all n greater than or equal to one. Therefore, bn is bounded away from zero. Therefore, that proves the proposition. So any non-zero, <coughs> sorry, any non-zero real number uh, is the formal limit of a Cauchy sequence that is bounded away from zero. All right, then we have our lemma uh, 5.3.15 next. Suppose that AN is a Cauchy sequence, which is bounded away from zero. Then the sequence AN inverse is also a Cauchy sequence. So we need this also to define inverses, which we'll do it shortly, but let's do this uh, proposition first. So let AN be a Cauchy sequence bounded away from zero. Then there's a rational C greater than zero, such that AN in absolute values greater than or equal to C for all N greater than or equal to one. And there's an N, a capital N in N, such that AJ minus AK in absolute values less than or equal to C squared epsilon for all JK greater than or equal to N. Then we let JK be greater than or equal to N. And we get that AJ inverse plus AK inverse in absolute value is the same thing as uh, one over AJ plus one over AK, <clears throat> which by the definition of addition of rational numbers is absolute value AK minus AJ over a absolute value AJ um, times a absolute value of AK, which is less than or equal to C square epsilon over C squared by construction, which equals epsilon. Therefore, AN inverse is eventually epsilon close uh, for all, um, sorry, this should be epsilon steady not epsilon close. Just fix that, epsilon is eventually epsilon steady for all epsilon greater than zero, which means that AN is Cauchy, all right? Okay, finally, we have the definition now of reciprocals of real numbers. Let X be a non-zero real number. Let AN be a Cauchy sequence bounded away from zero such that limit AN such uh, such a sequence exists by lemma 5.3.14. Then we define the reciprocal X inverse by the formula X inverse equals limit AN inverse from lemma 5.3.15. We know that X inverse is a real number. Okay, so um, that's the, the definition of reciprocal. And then we want to show that uh, reciprocation is well defined, which we'll do in lemma 5.3.17. In other words, you know, we need it to satisfy the axiom of substitution. So let a n b n be two Cauchy sequences bounded away from zero, such that lim a n and lim b n, uh, then limit a n inverse equals limit b n inverse. So here's the proof. <clears throat> 
Since a n and b n are bounded away from zero, there are rationals c c prime greater than zero such that absolute value a n greater than or equal to c and absolute value b n greater than or equal to c prime for all n greater than or equal to one. Furthermore, a n and b n are eventually epsilon close for all epsilon greater than zero. In particular, there's an, a capital N in N such that the distance between a n and b n is less than or equal to c c prime epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital N. Lastly, a n inverse and b n inverse are Cauchy sequences. Uh, then for uh, a n, sorry, then for any n greater than or equal to a, capital N, the distance between a n inverse and b n inverse is the absolute value of a n inverse minus b n inverse, which again by you know addition uh, addition of uh, rational numbers, that's the same thing as b n minus a n in absolute value divided by absolute value b uh, a n times absolute value bn, which is less than or equal to cc C prime epsilon over cc prime, uh, which equals uh, epsilon. Uh, therefore, an inverse and bn inverse are eventually epsilon close for all uh, epsilon greater than zero. So uh, that therefore limit an inverse uh, equals limit, sorry, uh, equals limit bn inverse since a n and b n are, are equivalent Cauchy sequences. Uh, that was my proof. Uh, Tau does it slightly differently. Actually, he does it in a, a much more efficient way. So I, I thought I'd add it here just because it's a nice, elegant proof. So uh, th this one, this proof here was mine. Uh, it's very similar to the one that we did up above. But uh, Tau does this using what we've already prove, proven, which makes the proof actually pretty, uh, pretty short. So I just said. Uh, Tau proves limit 5.317 in a much more efficient method by exploiting the fact that we know that multiplication is well-defined, which this is his proof down here. So limit a n inverse times limit a n times limit b n inverse is equal to some number p, uh, which is equal to limit a n inverse times limit b n times limit b n inverse. Uh, and then just you know going down the line, uh, the left-hand side is equal to limit a n inverse a n b n inverse. Uh, that's still equal to p, and the right-hand side is equal to limit a n inverse b n b n inverse. And when we simplify, we get that the left-hand side is limit b n inverse, and the right-hand side is limit a n inverse, and they both equal the same number, so that shows that they're equal. All right. Uh, there's not much left. There's a proposition here that he states and asks the reader to prove. He doesn't prove it in the book, so I'll do that here. The uh, proposition is that uh, for any real number x that's not zero, then x x inverse equals x inverse x equals one. And then here's my my quick little proof. Let x be limit a n, where a n is a Cauchy sequence bounded away from zero. Then x inverse is equal to lim a n inverse. Then x times x inverse is equal to limit a n times limit uh, a n inverse, which is limit a n a n inverse, which is limit of one, the constant sequence one, which obviously is equal to the real number one. Uh, and then the other side is done in a similar way. So I, I didn't do the other direction, but it's done in a you know similar manner. All right, a couple other little uh, loose ends to tie up here. Uh, we can now conclude that that R satisfies the field axioms, which is proposition 4.2.4. 4. Uh, also, the reciprocation of rational numbers in R is consistent with the definition in chapter four. For example, if Q is rational, then Q goes to limit Q, uh, where Q is the uh, QN go going from one to infinity is clearly Cauchy because it's constant. Uh, if Q is not zero, then Q inverse is the same thing as limit N goes to infinity Q inverse. So everything, you know, everything matches up. Lastly, x, y, and r, and y not zero, uh, we can use that to define x divided by y. We we divide, sorry, we define that to be x times y inverse. In particular, if x is not zero and x, y equals x, z, then you get a cancellation law. Um, but, you know, if that's true, then y is equal to zero. Uh, sorry, y is equal to, to z, sorry. Um, and that's the end of section 5.3, I believe, yeah. So it was kind of a long section, but uh, we got through. Let me stop the screen share. Uh, we have we got through section five point three now. So now we know about addition, multiplication, and uh, division, uh, and it, uh, you know subtraction and division and all that stuff. Uh, real numbers. We know what how we're going to define real numbers, and we know that the definition of equality is well defined, and so on. Well, we have to show that still, but. Uh, we'll do that in the the exercise set. So that'll that's what I'll do in the next video. And then uh, 
we'll just continue on after that. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some, some more videos uh, out this week. Um, the new, the fall semester is starting up again. So, you know, my time is going to be more limited than it was over the, the last few weeks. So my schedule is going to be a little bit tighter, so, which means, you know, less, uh, more time in between videos, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, this, this is not the place to talk about that. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be the solution set for this section. So uh, I'll see you then and keep learning until that time, guys.